and uh, didn't bother to wake him up. I seen that they just uh, got him out of, was doing rehab on him. They had that, that chair and different things that they had for him and stuff, and I knew that he was probably wore out, so I just kind of put my hand over top of him, just started praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. But it's just good to have him back where you're not traveling all the way to Toledo and back and what have you. And the good for Maryland where, I mean, every day she's traveling back and forth. So we thank the Lord. And let's just keep praying for him and interceding for him that, that uh, you know, God perfects everything for him in Jesus' name. He just needs a miracle in the name of the Lord. And I believe God can provide those miracles in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's just pray for him. Father... We pray once again for Daryl tonight, Lord, and we thank you that day by day, God, you strengthen him by might and power in the inner man as well as the physical man in Jesus' name. We truly thank you and we praise you, God. Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit that flows from the top of his head to the toes of his feet, let your anointing, God, rear him up off that bed of affliction as we bind the very fortresses and powers of hell that's trying to steal and kill his health, in Jesus' name, we speak forth deliverance and healing to flow into that body in the name of Jesus, and we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking for good things to happen for our brother in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Any other requests tonight that maybe you need prayer, bless the Lord, or somebody else needs prayer. If not, I've got a lot of the word that we've got to get into. We're covered in that. We've got a good, good study tonight, and uh, God only knows how long we're going to be. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I hope you brought your, your sack lunch with you. Your, what was it? Two, uh, two, two lo- uh, five loaves and two fishes or something like that. Bless the Lord forevermore. Take your Bibles, if you would, please. We're into First John. The fourth chapter, just, just got uh, started with the fourth chapter last week. And of course, the first verse, 4 1, it says this, First uh, John 4 1, let's read it. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. You know, when John said this, you know, in his day, in his age, that many false prophets have gone out into the world, uh, could you imagine when, if they had them back then, how much more it is today? Stop and think of this. Some would say, well, I don't think there's really too, that much. I want to tell you something. There's a pile of them. There's a pile of them. And some would say, well, how in the world do you, how do you know that they're, how do you know that they're false? You know, I've heard, I've heard prophets say this. They prophesied about such and such and such and such. And, the, and you know what? It never come to pass. But yet the church overlooks that. Can I tell you something? We're to try the spirits. If it don't come to pass, they're not a prophet. It's a, it's a, false, it's a false prophecy that, that has come forth. So uh, we can't believe everything that says it's, it's Christian. Am I right? Uh, because a lot of people, they go by Christian, but... That's all it is. It's a name as Christian. But if you you understand what Christian is, it's Christ's likeness to be like Christ. And many are not walking in accordance to the word of the living God. So we found out last week, hallelujah, how are we to try the spirits? Do we try them by the giftings that they have, by the talents that they have? Come on, help me. Is that how we try them? How, how, How do we try them then? How do you try the spirits? By the word of God. Remember I took you to Amos and told you Amos uh, was standing on a wall, seeing the Lord stand on the wall with a plumb line. And that plumb line shows you if you're straight or if you're crooked. And we know this. This is God's plumb line right here. The word of God. Hallelujah. If things are said and done that is not in line with the word of God, look at me. It's a false teaching. Please understand something. Behind every doctrine there is a spirit. Period dot dash behind every doctrine there's a spirit it's either the spirit of the lord which is the holy spirit or it's a spirit hear me of 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 the enemy satan himself and don't and please understand something satan knows the word probably better than what you know the word (laughs) you stop and think of this he's good at twisting 
the word and causing the word to sound good that he's saying. And can I tell you this? False prophets and false teachers, they give you partial truths, which is the hook that draws you in, hear me, and it tickles the ear. That's exactly what happened to Eve. Am I right? He tickled her ear. He, he did something to her that she liked. You'll be like God. How many know that's the pride of life? The very downfall of Satan himself. You'll be like God. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. And to see that this fruit was good for eating, didn't God really didn't mean what he said. You know, it, just a little twisting of the word can cause false doctrine. And folk, I want to tell you something. Hear me. You better know what your church believes. You better know the doctrine of your church. You better know what your preacher believes. Hallelujah. And it better be in line with apostolic teaching in the name of the Lord. And when I say apostolic teaching, I'm going right back to the apostles. That's where it began. And we've got to stick with that doctrine. And if we veer off course, we need to contend for the faith. And everybody said amen and amen. Bless the Lord. And I said this before. You know, you hear the word. You can't judge me. You can't do this and you can't do that. You know, you see this and people say it all the time. But let me say this. Bless the Lord. I'm not judging personalities But if you're a preacher or a teacher or evangelist, hear me, I'm going to judge your doctrine. I'm going to judge what you're teaching. Hello. And if it's not in line with the word of God, look at me. It's bogus teaching and can lead you off course. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So we've got to have an understanding. Just what does your preacher believe and what does your preacher teach? Because, hear me, there are hundreds if not thousands sitting under ministries. They're listening to something that's just tickling their ears, and they're on the way to hell. And, fe- and, and feel that everything's all right. And, folk, I want to tell you something. This is a day and age of deception that is running rampant through the body of Christ. You look at the change back from 20 years ago, let's, let's say 15 years ago, back from 15 years ago up to what we've got right now. There's such a change of paradigm shift, hear me, from, from apostolic teaching to man-made teaching. What tickles your fancy? And, you've got, and, and, and I'm telling you what, Satan has got his preachers that will stand and give you what you want to hear. But can I tell you something? I want what God wants me to hear in Jesus' name. Well, you know you're not going to build churches like that. I don't care. Look at me. God's the one that builds the church, not man or man's program. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We're to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. We're to lift up the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Praise God forevermore, and the Lord will draw men to him In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. But not everything that calls itself Christian is Christian. Not every church is preaching the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen out of that? Not every church is. Some would say, that's not your business. Oh, yes, it is my business. My business is to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? My business is to contend for the faith. And to see people going down a wrong road, look at me, a road destined to hell, if I, if I don't speak up, hear me, you know, I'll be held accountable. I'll be held accountable. Bless the Lord. So understand something. We are to keep in the straight and keep in the narrow. I was praying, as I said today, and I said, God, keep me in the straight and keep me in the narrow. Bless the Lord. And folk, I want to tell you something. Narrow is the way. To, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a broad way, folk. And not everybody's going to go that way, hear me. But most, uh, most will go that broad way. But me, a few there be that go the narrow way. And can I tell you something? The totality of this word is a narrow way. You know that as well as I do if you're a student of the word of God. Let's get back into the word. First John 4, 3. First John 4, 3. Let's read it together. 
And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. You see, if a person or preacher claims to reveal truth, yet refuses to acknowledge, now listen, refuses to acknowledge the virgin birth, refuses to acknowledge the redemptive, uh, redemptive death or the cross of Calvary, hear me, child of God, and his resurrection, this preacher, our teacher, our evangelist, is preaching another doctrine, another Jesus, and another spirit. We have got to stay in line with the Word of God. This Word is truth. It is the plumb line that we are to judge ourselves with as well as other doctrines in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The very Spirit that empowered, hear me, that empowered the future man of sin was working in John's day. That Antichrist Spirit. Can you imagine what's happening today? That very same Spirit is happening today as well in the church realm. And understand, hear me, there are many preachers, they don't believe in the virgin birth. Think of it. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe, hear me, child of God, they don't believe that, that, that there's the, the Word of God, there's, is, is not in, uh, they don't believe that, that there's uh, error, or how do I want to word this? They don't believe that, that uh, God's word is truth, but some of it has air in it. You can only be partial of it. Can I tell you something? If you can't believe all of it, let's fold it up, burn it, and have a weenie roast over it, and go down to JoJo's bar because tomorrow we die. We have no hope. Folk, I want to tell you something. Understand, if we don't believe, hear me, of the virgin birth, we don't believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, what have we got left? There's nothing left. Hear me and understand there's a lot of them out there today that, that stand behind the pulpit that don't, don't really believe the word of God and therefore they just, you know, they, uh, they're just good orators. They can talk good, but yet they don't fall in line with the word of the living God. Praise the Lord. I've always said this and always will say this. It's easy to judge doctrine. If they're not preaching the cross, it's false doctrine. Period, dot, dash. That's not hard to judge. Understand something. Praise God. Paul said, I preach Christ and him crucified, and that's only. Period. That was a, and Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And can I tell you something? Some of these bogus teachers, they, they don't put any premiums on Paul's teaching. They'd like to X Paul out completely of the Scriptures. And one hyper-grace teacher said this, Jesus was an old covenant preacher. Hear me. He was an old covenant preacher, which he did preach under the old covenant, bringing in the new covenant. Understand that. And this is what he said. If, 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 if anybody said that, that Jesus taught the Beatitudes and that we're to follow those Beatitudes, he would, he would laugh himself to death. Now, how many know... That's rank blasphemy against the Word of God. And people go, oh, that's some powerful teaching. No, it's, it's abominable. It's blasphemy against God's Word. Hear me. It's, it, it's, my mind just about, it about blows your mind of, of some of these doctrines that are being presented as gospel, and they're not gospel at all. It's another Jesus and another spirit, and many are being taken and swayed by this Antichrist spirit. Hallelujah. Keep with me, if you would, please. Bless the Lord. First John 4, 4, it says this. Let's read it together. You are of God, little children, and overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, we always use that scripture, you know, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. But if we keep this scripture in line with the context, and it refers to the previous scripture, listen to what it's, it's saying. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Overcome them. Who is them? 
Who's them that John was talking about? He's talking about these false teachers. Hallelujah. It shows that they, they, had, they withstood the lure of false doctrine. Hear me. Why? They held true to apostolic teaching. And John here says you've overcome them because you've tried them. Look at me. You've tested the spirits and you found them be, to be bogus. Hallelujah. Ought not the church today listen, not just listen to some doctrine that's being presented, but let us lay it in line with the Word of God and see if it is so. Let us be Bereans in Jesus' name. To study the Word. Some say, I don't have time to study the Word. Well, it don't take that much time to study through some things. You know, a chapter or whatever a day or, 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 or half a chapter a day and read through the New Testament and find out, bless God, what truth is in Jesus' name. And understand something. I endeavor to preach the truth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. But here John's saying you've overcome them. Why? Because... You know the Word of God. You've studied the Word of God. You've lined their lives up with the Word of God and what they're teaching and found it to be bogus. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. You wouldn't have some of these, these uh, movie-starred preachers on television if the church world would be in tune with the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And know the Word of God. It's a shame, and I don't say this sarcastically, but I, I say it with, a, with a, uh, really a broken heart. People are ignorant of the Word of God. They are ignorant of God's Word. They don't know what God's Word says, so therefore they'll believe anybody that calls himself a pastor or an evangelist or a teacher or what have you that stands behind the pulpit and believe everything that they say. Bless the Lord. I don't know about you, but you know I don't watch too much Christian television. And, and, but when I do, when I listen, I listen to see if truth is being presented. And if something else is being lifted up other than the Word of God, I just change the channel. And I, let me say this, there's not too many on Christian television that is preaching the truth of the gospel. They're preaching something that people want them to hear. And we'll get into this just a little bit down along the line. Praise God. Hallelujah. But take notice, if you don't stand for anything, if you don't stand for truth, look at me, you're going to fall for these false doctrines that will tickle your ears. Tickle, 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 tickle. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. How many, are run, how many today are running after the false doctrines? Stop and think of this. Running after false doctrines. They promote, here's the promotion. They promote what people want. That's false teaching. They promote what people want, not what God wants and what God's Word says He wants, but they promote what the people want to hear. That's what they call ear tickling. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you something? Jesus was not an ear tickling preacher. Paul was not an ear tickling preacher. The apostles was not an ear tickling preacher, but they taught the truth of the gospel. And can I tell you, when you preach truth, People get mad, and preachers and pastors don't like people to get mad. But I'd much rather have people mad at me than have God mad at me. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to stick with the word of the living God. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. But these teachers, as I said, they, they promote what, what people want and not what God wants. And their main mindset is on earthly things. Now stop and meditate on that. How much preaching in totality is placed on, hear me, the temporal things of this life? Think of it. Very few preaching, hear me, about the eternal values of heaven. <laughs> that ought to tell you something. It ought to tell you, hear me, where the hearts of people are. Stop and think of this a second. Bless the Lord. But the next scripture here in John tells us what they promote in 1 John 4, 5. Let's read it. They are of the world. <laughs> Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. <laughs> you see, the source of their false doctrines are centered around the world. What I can obtain 
in this life. What about the life after? That's what's going to count. Everything we obtain here on the face of the earth, look at me, it will burn. Makes no difference if you're wearing a $500 suit. A corpse don't care if it's a $500 suit. All right? He could care less. He's dead. He's gone. The suit will go back to ashes. Hear me. Hallelujah. But what will go on forever and ever and ever is where that man spends eternity in the name of Jesus and what he has laid up into the kingdom of heaven. Bless the Lord. There's where the dividends will be paid in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Boy, I don't know about you, but I love the Word of God. It's my compass. It's your compass to keep us on course. Hear me. I was in the Navy, and I was a helmsman when we had to stand guard or what have you for four hours, drive the ship. And I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. Sometimes a mid-watch from 1 to 4 o'clock in the morning, and you're watching this compass, and it's going back and forth, and you've got to stay right in line with that compass. And if you're off course, maybe just one degree or two degrees, can I tell you something? You'll be way, way off. Some would say, well, it's, they might be just a little bit off here, a little bit off there. But can I tell you, in the end, it will lead you to the ditch. There was one time I was driving the ship, hear me, and, and I was so tired and standing up and my head was going down, you know, watching that compass at night and, and the glow off of it and, and what have you, you know, and moving back and forth. And sometimes it gets you moving back and forth. And watching, especially if you've got trailing seas or anything like that there, in a rough seas, and you're sitting there watching it, and I was watching, and I was going like this. And, of course, you've got a lieutenant or an ensign out in front, you know, that's watching it too. And you're sitting there driving, you're going. And slumped over that wheel, a wheel, big old wheel. Slumped over that wheel, and all of a sudden you hear, Helmsman, mind your helm! And you wake up, and you're off course. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is the lieutenant that hollers out and says, Helmsman, mind your helm. You're off course. My God, we've got to get back on course in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We've got to keep the straight and keep the narrow. We've got to teach apostolic truth instead of teaching man's doctrine and man's plans that will tickle the ears. Hear me. Let us get back to Jesus Christ and Him crucified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But here, John's telling us what to look for. He said, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. The source of their false doctrines are centered around the world. Everything around the world. And those who are worldly, hear me, those that are worldly find great entertainment in their messages. Am I right? Hear me. Why? Because it appeases the flesh. It tickles the flesh. Say this with me. Feed the spirit, starve the flesh. One more time. Feed the spirit, starve the flesh. One more time. Feed the spirit, starve the flesh. Feed the flesh. Help me, come on. No, oh, you're supposed to say feed, feed the flesh. <laughs> Repeat after me. Feed the flesh. Starve the spirit. See you guys ahead of me. One more time. Feed the flesh. Starve the fear. Understand me. Hallelujah. Anything that's feeding the fleshly man, that tickles this man's fancy, you're starving the spirit on the inside of you. Hello. And the things of this world will put a stranglehold on the true Christian, hear me, to where he's so involved in the affairs of this life that he can't be a soldier of the cross of Calvary. Why? Because he's torn between the twixt. Hear me. So many things, they're tied up in here and so many things are tied up in there. And can I tell you something? A hundred years from now, it isn't going to mean a hill of beans. What's going to matter is what you've done with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, since you've accepted him as Lord and Savior. Look at Philippians, if you would, please. Philippians 3, 17 through 21. Philippians 3, we're talking about false teachers here. Philippians 3, 17 through 21. 
Philippians 3, 17 through 21. I'll give you a chance to get there. General Electric Power Company. Remember that, right? Yep. What, what does that mean? <laughs> you got it, right on course. Easy way to, easy way to find it instead of look, going in front of your Bible and looking for a, a page number. Hallelujah. Philippians three seventeen through 21. Listen to what it says here. <laughs> Philippians 3, 17 through 21. All right. Here we go. Let's read. Brethren, be followers together of me. This is Paul speaking to the church. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I told you often. Everybody say many. And now tell you even weeping. Come on, help me. That they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Can I read that one more time? For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly Things. Boy, this scripture is very informative, especially to judge doctrine. Hallelujah. What do they teach on the most? Is it about laying up your treasures in heaven? Or is it about obtaining things here on the face of the earth? You've just discovered, hear me, what's in their heart. They're more attached to the world and worldly desires than what they are, the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I place my thought in heaven. Bless the Lord. And as I said, hear me, a corpse don't care if he's got a $10 suit, or a $5 suit, or a $5,000 suit. He don't care. Are you hearing me? Bless the Lord. What's going to matter is what we've laid up in heaven, in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. But Dake's commentary says, five facts about false teachers and preachers. Number one, they are enemies of the cross. And I've heard preachers say this. Nobody wants to hear about no bloody cross. They want to know what they can obtain now. How many know that's worldly? I want it now. What's, what can I get here? Can I get a Rolex watch? A brand new home? A car? And, and understand something. Hear me. God prospers his people. Don't get me wrong. But if our heart set is upon that, you are out in left field someplace. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Matter of fact, we're not to seek after those things. We're to seek after God, Him, number one, in the name of the Lord. Five facts about teachers. They are enemies of the cross. And as I said, I've heard him say, nobody wants to hear about an old bloody cross. Can I tell you something? That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Because without the cross, you can't obtain anything. Period. Everything that we obtain comes through the cross of Calvary. Every bit of it. Hallelujah. It's a, and number two, their end is destruction. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. The end of it is destruction. Number three, their God is their belly. What in the world is he talking about their belly? He's not talking about a big fat belly, are you hearing me? But he's talking about the worldly appetites. They're more hungry for the things of this world than what they are for the things in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, their glory is in their shame. Now stop and think of this a second. I've heard people bragging about how many jets they've got. Bragging about they got their own airports. Bragging about how many millions of dollars they have. Can I tell you something? That is bogus teaching. The Bible declares, plainly declares, hear me, those that seek to get rich will run themselves through with a sharp iron, a sword. Folk, let us stick with the word of God. Hear me. Hallelujah. God knows what we have need of. And can I tell you something? Here's a good teaching. If you sow your $1,000 seed, God's going to give you another 1000 back or more, or even pay your mortgage off. Hello. How many know that's false? But can I tell you something? Many people think, man, I'm going to sow that, I'm going to sow that seed. Bless the Lord, and there's nothing wrong with giving, hear me. 
but they're given with the wrong attitude. I'm given to get. No, I'm given because I love Him. And can I tell you something? Look at me. If you sow your seed, God's going to prosper you. If you sow your seed, hallelujah, I'll guarantee you God's going God's to open up the windows of heaven and pour you down super abundance. Hear me, because that is His word. And what, in other words, what they do, they, this is what they're saying. They're saying, if you do this, pull the right cord, hear me, and punch the right button, out pops your blessing, and God's no more than a bellhop for you. Now, I've been thinking this a second. He's no more than a, a glorified bellhop. He's a glorified Santa Claus in the, in the sky. You know, that's the very thing, hear me, that Satan accused Job for. He said, the only reason why he's serving you is because you have blessed him financially. You have blessed everything of his hands. And if you take that away, he'll curse you to the face. And God said, no, I know my man's heart. Go ahead, do what you want to do to him, but you can't kill him. And can I tell you something? In one day, he lost his prosperity. He lost his family. Hear me, he lost everything. He was bankrupt. And this is what his prayer was. Naked I came into the world and naked I'll go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, there's somebody that's hooked on the Lord. You see, he wasn't seeking after the blessing of God. He was seeking God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And understand, we've got got it turned around. Instead of seeking God's kingdom, we've got seeking the blessing of the Lord. How to get rich. Let's seek God first and then let God touch you and move upon you. That's the way that it's supposed to be. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've heard some preachers that, that they said something about preaching prosperity message that, that you know, that it wasn't really working for them. So they would take their old clunker and, you know, 10 miles or 15 miles from where they was preaching and rent a, you know, a Roy's, Rolls Royce or whatever Mercedes Benz and, and rent it for a day to preach the gospel that people would look at and say, man, it's surely working for them. <laughs> then after they leave, take it back. But hear me. Understand something. This, the, the, God is a God that will prosper. But folk, I want to tell you something. If our heart is upon the eternal value of this world, we, are so, we will solely be disappointed. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but look at me. I know when, when, when we was down in Guatemala and Joel and Danielle, you know as well as I do, some of those people back in the middle of those jungles, they didn't have anything. But they had God in the center of their family. And their families was so knit together, something that we don't have here in the United States of America. And they don't have two nickels to rub together. But yet very prosperous spiritually. I'd much rather be like that, hear me, than live in a million dollar mansion and be bankrupt spiritually. Hear me. Bless the Lord. I don't know, but I lived pretty well like that. Not that bad, but when I was raised as a kid, I, I, I lived off of just little means. That's why some of the things that we did down in Guatemala and Africa and what have you, hear me, that didn't bother me so much. You know, as far as like running waters and toilets and what have you. I didn't have those things when I was young. I had an outhouse. And if you went, you know, you went to the outhouse in the wintertime. And it got pretty cold in the wintertime. But, you know, if you, if you, 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 you graduate up to a good looking bucket, you know, that's what you used. A bucket. And then you went and emptied it during the day. What? How old are you? 67 years old. Hear me. I didn't know what running water was. Well, I knew what it was, but we didn't have it. Didn't know what a shower was. Took a bath in a foot tub. Mom would heat the water up on an, on an old coal stove. Heat the water up and pour it into that foot tub and look at me. We had four kids or five kids take the same bath in the same bath water. <laughs> he wouldn't be the first one in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, I was kind of raised like that, and, th and things like that don't bother me, whereas other people, it really bothers them, you know, because they've been reared up in a different way, but that uh, never did bother me. And can I tell you this? When I was poor, I never knew I was poor. <laughs> you couldn't tell me I was poor. And of course, uh, my grandpa, they, they lived 
a half a mile down the road from us, or a little more, three quarters of a mile, and that'd be Buzzy's dad over here, Steve Bazard and Linda Bazard's, uh, Steve Bazard's dad, my grandpa, and uh, he was a railroader, and he had a little bit of money, and man, he had a flush toilet. He had running water in his house. And I'll tell you what, I'd ride my tricycle and go down to Grandma and Grandpa's house just to flush a toilet. I thought that was a miracle, man, to have a flesh toilet. Think of that. And I thought, man, how, how wonderful it would be to have a flesh toilet. <laughs> yeah, I got one now. Bless the Lord, got two of them. <laughs> one for me and one for me. No, bless the Lord. But uh, I had a, uh, an aunt that lived in Delphus. Of course, we lived outside of Delphus. And, and uh, sometimes she would watch us kids, and we would go up there, and, and uh, she had Cheese Whiz. I'm, you know, how many know what Cheese Whiz is? Man, she'd break open a, a can of that Cheese Whiz and put it on nice, fresh bread. And I'm telling you what, I'd just about slobber at the bit. I never had that when I, you know, where we lived, never had cheese whiz. I thought, man, gee whiz. <laughs> I died and went to heaven. Some would say, come on, you mean tell me you really, yes, we'd early lived like that. We certainly did. Bless the Lord. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that life for anything. No way, shape, or form. Praise the Lord forevermore. Had a great time. Hallelujah. We lived off a little bit of nothing. And we thank the Lord. And I'm not saying that my dad was lazy. He, you know, would be laid off and worked all different types of jobs. But you know what? When you got a pile of kids, you know, <laughs> money just don't go around too, too well. And, of course, they didn't get that, that kind of money to, you know, pay for the means and, and, you know, work two jobs or what have you and try to take care of the kids. And we had a great big, 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 big garden to see us through the winter. And every one of us kids would work in that garden. I mean, work pulling weeds and hoeing and you name it. Bless the Lord. Go ahead. But sometimes it wasn't a matter of being poor because we had neighbors that were very wealthy people. And they had running water in their house in their kitchen, but they would not have a bathroom in their house. They thought that was just a joke. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> they liked the old outhouse, huh? <laughs> Yeah. You didn't live in the city. You wasn't expecting to have all that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I remember mom, she got a, a pitcher pump. I mean, what a pitcher pump is. And, man, I'm telling you what, that was about like next thing to go. You know, to, to pump that old thing and the old water come running out and she didn't have to go outside during the winter time and pump water, you know, with the old pump outside and what have you. We had running water inside. Think of that. Bless God. Hallelujah. But you know what? The thing of it is, I never knew I was even poor. Enjoyed life. We had great times. Bless the Lord. I'm not, you know, I, it don't bother me that I lived like that. And it don't bother me that I, I can tell people that's the way that I live. But understand me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I got along just fine. Hallelujah. Now, if we're out of electricity for an hour, my Lord, we're just <laughs> pulling our hair out. Help me. <laughs> That's why I got a generator. <laughs> our, our electric went out last night for about, what, three hours or something like that. And, uh, you know, when you don't have electric, all you had running around with candles and, and twiddling your fingers or what have you, bless the Lord. But I, I've got a, a, a generator that I plugged in. I wasn't going to plug it in, but I plugged it in anyhow. Praise the Lord. Let's get back to our teaching, okay? Bless God. We got off base here somehow. <laughs> You took me off base. <laughs> but we're back in Philippians. But it says, for our conversation, listen to what it says. For our conversation, Paul's talking to the church now. For our conversation is in heaven. The, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Bless the Lord. You see, Paul is more, more spiritually minded or heavenly minded than earthly minded. And some would say, well, you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Paul was powerfully good, although he had 
heavenly mind in the name of the Lord Jesus. My Lord, I would to God that we had people today that are so heavenly minded in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're, that's where we're going to be, be living for eternity, folks, in heaven. Praise the Lord. If I don't have a mansion here on the face of the earth, which I doubt if I ever have, I'm content with what I've got. Hear me. And I could care less if I live in a mansion. Don't make no difference to me. Mansions don't bring contentment. It don't bring contentment. The only thing that brings contentment is relationship with Jesus. Praise the Lord. But if I don't get that, which I won't, praise the Lord, I know I've got one in heaven. And you know what? I'm going to spend eternity there. And I'm going to walk on a place that's got streets of gold. Hear me. And walls of jasper and all different types of precious stones. Can you imagine? And the light of that city, the new Jerusalem, the light of that city will be the Lord Jesus Christ reflecting through all of those precious stones. Can you imagine the beauty that we will behold when we step into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's an old song that we used to sing years and years ago. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But let's look at this, if we would, please, in Matthew 6 for a few seconds. Let's look what Jesus says about bogus teaching. Matthew six nineteen. Let's just read the first verse, if we would, please, for right now. Everybody there? Let's read it. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Everybody say temporal and eternal. What's he talking about? Eternal. Hallelujah. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. That's temporal. But where at? In heaven. That's eternal. Praise the Lord. He's saying eternal is way more, way more, more important than the temporal. Bless the Lord. Now listen to what he says. Where moth and rust, or rust doth corrupt and thieves breaks through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 21st verse, read it. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want to tell you something. If your treasure is on the face of the earth, look at me. There's where your heart's going to be. If, you're, if your mindset and your heart set is upon the earthly things of this world, that's where your heart's going to be. And understand this as well. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. It's not hard to tell where people are spiritually. Hear me. You know why? Because their heart will give them away. Their mouth will give them away. If somebody's in love with something, I'm telling you what, I'll guarantee you, you're going to hear it. Am I right? You're going to hear it. And if we're in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you think we ought to be hearing it? Come on. Praise the Lord. No doubt about it. Hear me. Our heart has got to be set upon heavenly things. Hallelujah. Now listen to what he says here. Where am I at here? Okay. uh, 21st verse. For where your treasure is, there you where your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. That's a figure of speech. Hear me. If there, therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Now look what he says in 24th verse. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Hallelujah. One, one is either devotion to God, the other is devotion to the world. That's what he's talking about here. We're either devoted to God or we're devoted to the world. How many know you can't straddle the fence? I'm not in love with the world, but I'm in love with God. But if we're in love, we got one foot in the world and one foot in God, it just don't work. Oil don't mix with water. 
Hallelujah. You see, God requires totality of the heart that we serve Him wholeheartedly in the name of the Lord. He's our number one source in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look what he says here now. Therefore, I say, when you, when you see that word therefore, it means he's going back up to the prior scriptures. What, what He's talking about the prior scriptures that we just read. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? That's a question mark. You answer it. Yes. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature, or worrying about tomorrow? And why take ye thought for raiment? Don't worry about clothes. Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of, of all these things. But here's the kicker right here. Let's read it. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, or take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the, for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Hallelujah. So what's he saying? He's saying this, you know, talking to disciples, and he's saying this, he's saying, don't worry about tomorrow, what you're going to eat, what you're going to put on, the clothes that you're going to wear. I know what you have need of. Don't go seeking after these things. Hallelujah. But he said, seek first. Everybody say first. How many know what that means? Yeah. Number one. Number one. Hold your finger up. Number one. Number one, what is it? God. Seek first God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Not your plan. Not what I'm going to do, but what he wants you to do. Seek first his kingdom. And then what happens? All these other things shall be added unto you. I don't have to seek after my blessing, folk. Hello. My blessing will come seeking after me if I get things right. If I put him first, the blessing will follow after me. We've got it wrong and the teaching wrong. We're to seek after the blessing and the hand of God when God says, I want you to seek my face and not my hand. Come on. Hallelujah. When we seek the face or the heart of God, God in return fulfills our earthly needs in the name of Jesus. He'll supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Now look at me. He said he'll supply our needs and not our wants. Am I right? (laughs) We can want a lot of things. But God said, I'll supply your needs. Bless the Lord. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. It takes faith to trust God. That's all there is to it. It takes faith to trust His Word. Praise the Lord. But I do know one thing. If long as we stick with God, God will stick with us. As long as we stick with His Word, His Word will work for us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He'll see to it that we are taken care of in the name of the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Glory to God. But he said, seek first God's kingdom. This pertains to to the spiritual and not the physical. Am I right? Hallelujah. Most teaching today is around what? The physical. The physical. 
What is most of the gospel that's being promoted today? The gospel of prosperity, the gospel of success, the gospel of pleasure, the gospel of self-esteem, the gospel of humanism. Hear me, the gospel of of political correctness. It's all centered around self. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But if we take care of the spiritual first, look at me, God will see to it that he'll supply our needs in Jesus' name. Tony? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That song that Enoch sings, that uh, lay your Isaacs down. Uh, you know, God didn't want Isaac. He wanted Abraham. <laughs> Isaac was, you know, the promised child. It was the, it was the dearest thing to, to Abraham's heart. Hallelujah. And that come about by a promise of God. And the Lord says, Lay that Isaac down. Tried him right to the tilt. He didn't want Isaac. He wanted Abraham. Now I know that you'll trust me in everything. Praise the Lord forevermore. And can I tell you something? Hear me. Hallelujah. We can take it to the bank of what we just taught right here. Hallelujah. If we put God first, God will supply our needs in the name of the Lord Jesus. And he said, don't go around worrying about this, that, and the other. I'm not worried about the economy coming up, whatever, you know. And, and I pray to God we have a good econ- economy with this new, new president coming in. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But I, you know what? If the, if the economy would tank, I'm not going to worry about it because God don't never tank. God knows how to take care of his people. Yeah, hear me. Hallelujah. So we put our confidence and our trust in our God to supply our needs in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. And some, you know, I had one person one time when I worked a secular job and said, you know, God don't really supply your needs. He said, he was a plant superintendent. And he said, I really supply your needs because I give you a job here. And I just looked and I laughed. And I said, no. I said, God's the one that supplied my needs, and I said, God's the one to give you this job where you're at right now. No, 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 no. God never gave me this job. I did. I, I come down from here all the way up to here. He said, I, you know, I did it all on my own. I said, you know what? I said, God could snap his finger, and you could be laying flat on your back, and this job would be gone from you just that quick. Mm-hmm. Period, dot, dash. And I said, let me tell you something. Let me ask you this. Who gave you breath? Mm-hmm. Who gave you breath? Who formed you in your mother's womb? You know, they can't answer things like that. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. You see, God's got to be at the helm of everything. And I say everything, hear me. No matter what it is, he's got to be at the helm of all in the name of Jesus. Because, and I made a post the other day, if we, if we leave God out of our plans, we're built on a, on a house made of cards. And when the adversity of winds blow, the cards will come tumbling down on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand and can I tell you something let us build our foundation on Christ and him crucified and I say yea and amen because the Holy Spirit works in the perimeters of the cross in the name of the Lord I don't know about you but I'm going to stick to the old rugged cross and what Jesus did thereby in Jesus name Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew, or I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, 13. And we'll be, we'll be closing. It's getting late. I thought I'd get a little further in this, but I, I figured I would get off on some rabbits. Hebrews eleven thirteen. It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a City, hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but I'm going to that city. What's he talking about? He's talking about, they wasn't concerned with the temporal. 
but they're concerned with the eternal. And they were saying, this world is not my home, but I seek a heavenly home, a heavenly kingdom, and I'm going that direction. Can I tell you the heroines of faith in the chapter 11th here of Hebrews? Look at me. Praise God. Some of them was destitute. Some of them was sawn in two, by, uh, put in logs and sawn in two, sawn asunder. Some was boiled in oil because they wouldn't renounce their faith. Others, they hid in caves. Look at me, lived in caves. They didn't live in no prosperity, but they had this testimony. They was looking for a heavenly kingdom. You know why? Because their mind set and heart set was on heaven and not on the temporal things of this life. I say, God help us to get back to what the Word of God declares in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Any, any questions tonight? Bless the Lord. Floor is open. Questions. I don't know if I can answer them or not, but you got a question? Praise God, I'll try to answer it. Everything fine? All right. Praise God. Stand your feet. We'll close. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you learned something tonight. I know I learned and bless the Lord. And, and, and here's, the, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> We're so prone to read people's books. And we try to get revelation out of these books. Can I tell you something? Sometimes books will lead you to error. Get right here. Right in the word of God. It will never lead you into error. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Jeremy closes in prayer. Would you, brother?